In this video, we will discuss stability of a two-wheel vehicle taking a turn. This is a two-wheel vehicle where this is front wheel, rear wheel, engine. This is center of gravity of the vehicle in top view. This is center of gravity of the vehicle in front view. Its distance from the road surface is h. When this vehicle is moving in forward direction, in that case, this front wheel and rear wheel will rotate in clockwise direction when looking from the right side. Now let us assume this vehicle is taking a turn, say right turn with radius r. In this situation, it is not possible to keep the vehicle in vertical position and therefore this vehicle must be tilted to some angle from the vertical to keep the vehicle in stable condition. Now this vehicle is tilted towards the direction of rotation with an angle of theta from vertical. This angle theta is called angle of heel. In this particular case, the various forces acting are first centrifugal force which is an inertia force acting in outward direction, weight acting in vertical downward direction. Apart from these two forces, there will be one gyroscopic couple also. Let's discuss gyroscopic effect in this particular situation. This is axis of spin about which this wheel is rotating. So this wheel is making, this vehicle is making an angle of theta from vertical. Therefore perpendicular to this, this line is perpendicular to this wheel. So this line will make same angle theta from horizontal. So this angle should be theta. Now there is another axis, axis of precision. When this vehicle is moving ahead or moving forward, in that case, this axis is rotating about this axis of precision. And direction of this rotation will be clockwise when looking from the top. When you look from the top, this direction of rotation of this axis, this axis is rotating about axis of precision in clockwise direction when looking from the top. Now this vehicle, this wheel is moving in clockwise direction when looking from this side. Therefore, from right, right hand screw rule, the direction of angular momentum would, would be, this will be your I omega, initial angular momentum. Now, now this angular momentum is not at right angles to the axis of precision. So this angular momentum can be resolved into two components. One is I omega cos theta, so this angle is theta, so this component will be I omega cos theta and this component will be I omega sin theta. There will be no effect of this particular component because this component, direction of this angular momentum and axis of precision are parallel. We know that angular momentum vector and axis of precision must be perpendicular to each other to have gyroscopic effect. So there will be gyroscopic effect because of this particular component only and there will be no gyroscopic effect because of this component. So this can be represented in a horizontal plane. So, so this is initial angular momentum. This is initial angular momentum which I have drawn here. When this vehicle move forward, then this momentum will change. The direction of this momentum will be this one. Change in angular momentum will be from first end point to last end point. This will be change, of, change in angular momentum. This, is, this will be the direction of active gyroscopic couple. Just opposite will be reactive gyroscopic couple. So this is reactive gyroscopic couple vector. Now reactive gyroscopic couple vector is in horizontal plane. Therefore, the couple will act in vertical plane. So I have drawn vertical plane. In this plane, this couple will act and I have shown this couple here. So this couple is towards this direction. To get this direction of couple, you have to apply couple in anti-clockwise direction because according to right hand screw rule, if you rotate right hand screw in anti-clockwise direction, it will move in this particular direction. So one anti-clockwise couple will act in this vehicle. So I have shown this couple here. This is reactive gyroscopic couple which tries to overturn this vehicle outside. So all these forces I have shown separately here. So this, this length, this length is h. So this is vertical height h. So this height I have shown as h. Now forces, this is fc, mg, this angle is theta, and this is cg. Once you show all the forces in in this diagram, you can apply equations of equilibrium. This is one inertia force, centrifugal force, and this is one inertia couple, gyroscopic couple. Uh, apart from this, uh, there will be one uh, friction force. Force I have not shown here because if you take moment about this point, then moment of that friction force will become zero. So if you take moment about this point, then uh, this is uh, one force mg. 
so perpendicular distance is h sin theta so this is h so this length will be h sin theta so mg into h sin theta now moment of mg about this point is clockwise so this is clockwise moment so i have taken this clockwise moment as positive so mg into h sin theta force into perpendicular distance now second force is fc moment of fc will be anti clockwise about this point if you see this fc is in anti clockwise direction and perpendicular distance is this one so fc into h cos theta so i have taken negative sign because this is anti clockwise moment the third one is couple which is anti clockwise in direction therefore i have taken minus and this is your gyroscopic couple so sum of all this must be equal to 0 so equal i have i put this value as equal to 0 from this you can get this relation mg h sin theta is equal to fc h cos theta plus cg from this equation you can determine any unknown quantity now here m is mass of the vehicle g is acceleration due to gravity h is height of center of gravity from the road surface in vertical position theta is angle of heel fc is centrifugal force which can be calculated using relation mv square divided by r uh, where v is velocity of this vehicle and r is the radius of rotation so the this surface this path this is the radius of this path from this you can calculate fc cg is the gyroscopic couple which is equal to cg1 plus minus cg2 cg1 is the gyroscopic couple because of the two wheels because of these two wheels and cg2 is the gyroscopic couple because of this engine here we have assumed that this engine axis and vehicle and wheel axis are parallel to each other now we use plus sign when sense of rotation of engine and both wheels are same if sense of rotation of these two wheels and engine is different then in that case you have to use negative sign now how can you calculate cg1 cg1 is equal to i omega omega p that is the relation so here uh, two wheels therefore i have taken two uh, now moment of inertia of wheel moment of uh, angular velocity of wheel and i already uh, explained that i have we have to use i omega cos theta so this is i w omega w cos theta into omega p and angular velocity of precision now cg2 is calculated can be calculated using ie uh, so here i i have written ie moment of inertia of engine then angular velocity of engine but in place of angular velocity of engine you can write g into omega w where g is the gear ratio and omega p is again angular velocity of precision now here i w and i e may be given and omega w and omega p can be calculated using these relations omega w angular velocity of wheel is equal to velocity of the vehicle divided by radius of the wheel and omega p is the velocity of the vehicle and radius of the curvature from these relations you can determine any unknown quantity so let's take one example a motorcycle with its rider has a mass of 200 kg so write this mass m is equal to 200 kg the center of gravity of the machine and rider combined being 60 cm above the ground so h is equal to 60 cm so in meters i have written 0.6 meter moment of inertia of each road wheel so i w is given 0.525 kg meter square and the rolling diameter of 60 cm so r w half of this this is diameter so this radius is 30 cm that is 0.3 meter the engine rotates at 6 times the speed of the road wheels so g is equal to 6 and in the same sense so it is rotating in same sense therefore we have to use cg is equal to cg1 plus cg2 engine rotating parts have a moment of inertia of 0.1685 so ie is equal to 0.1685 kg meter square determine the angle of heel necessary if the unit is speeding at 60 km per hour around a curve of 30 m so it is moving with a velocity of 60 km per hour so i have converted that into meter per second by dividing 60 by 3.6 so that is 16.67 m per second and r capital r is given 30 m now this is second part if the road and tire friction allow for the angle of heel not to exceed 50 degree what is the maximum road velocity of the motorcycle so in second case theta is given so there are two case in case 1 we have to determine theta and in second case we have to determine velocity of the vehicle if theta is equal to 50 degree so let's start with case 
We have already discussed this diagram. So according to this diagram, mg h sin theta is equal to fc h cos theta plus cg. Now, uh, value of m is known, g is known, uh, h is known, theta we have to determine, we have to determine fc and cg also. So fc can be calculated using relation mv square by r. So m is equal to 200 kg. This is 200. B is 16.67, which we have calculated here, 16.67 meter per second square divided by capital R. This is 30 meter. From this, FC is equal to 1852.6 Newton. Now, CG can be calculated, CG1 plus CG2, because both are rotating in same sense. Now, CG1 is equal to 2 IW omega W cos theta into omega P. IW is known, IW is 0.525. Now we need omega w and omega p, so these two values are calculated. Omega w for v, v divided by r w, so v is equal to 16.67 and radius of v is 0.3 meter. So from this you are getting omega w is equal to 55.6 radian per second. Now omega p is equal to v by r, 16.67 divided by 30 is equal to 0 0.56 radian per second. Once you get these two values, you can calculate CG1 as equal to 2 into 0 0.525. This is the value of IW. Omega W is 55.6. Cos theta, theta is not known. And 0 0.56 is omega P. To simplify this, you will get CG1 is equal to 32.7 cos theta. Similarly, CG2 can be obtained from this relation. IE is known. So IE is 0 0.1685, so 0 0.1685, then G is 6, omega W we have already calculated 55.6 and cos theta not known and omega P is equal to 0 0.56. So simplify this again, you will get CG2 as equal to 31.47 cos theta. Now total CG is equal to sum of these two 64.17 cos theta. Now all values in this equation are determined, so put these values, so m is equal to 200 plus 9.81 into h is 0 0.6 sin theta is equal to 1852.6 which is fc into h cos theta 0 0.6 cos theta plus cg is equal to 32.7 cos theta, sorry cg is equal to 64.17 cos theta. You put uh, once you put all these values, these two, uh, this is cos theta terms and this is sin theta terms. Take values of this, multiply this, these three. You will get 1177.2 sin theta. And when you multiply these two, you uh, when you add these two, you will get 11 11.1175.73 cos theta. From this, tan theta will equal to all, uh, almost one tan theta. So sin theta divided by cos theta, so 1175.73 divided by 1177.2, you are getting 0 0.999, which is almost equal to 1. Therefore, theta is equal to tan inverse 1, which is 45 degrees. So this is your first answer. So this is the answer for case 1. Now let's take second case. Case 2, we have to determine V if theta is equal to 50 degree. So same relation. In this relation, Fc is equal to mv square by r. Now, v is not known. So, this is 200. This is 30. When you simplify this, you will get 6.67 v square newton. Now, to get Cg, Cg again, Cg1 plus Cg2. So, Cg1 is equal to 2 iw omega w cos theta into omega p. Omega w and omega p we have to determine. So, this is v divided by r w. So, this is v divided by 0 0.3. Omega P is equal to V divided by 30 radian per second. So put these values here and get CG1. So when you put all these values and solve this, you will get 0 0.075 V square. So only unknown is V square. Theta in this case is known as 50 degree. Now CG2 is IE G omega W cos theta into omega P. Again put all these values. And when you solve this, you will get 0 0.072 V square. So Cg is equal to sum of these two. So when you add these two, you will get 0 0.147 V square. Now put all these values in equation 1. In this equation, when you put all these values, so this is 200, 9.81, 0 0.6, this is H, sin theta, sin 50, then is equal to Fc is 6.67 V square, 6.67 V square into H cos theta, H is 0 0.6 cos 50 degree, plus 0 0.147 v square which is cg that is gyroscopic couple
So by simplifying this, you will get 901.8 is equal to 2.72 V square. So from this, you are getting V is equal to 18.2 meter per second. You can convert this meter per second into kilometer per hour by, by multiplying with 3.6. So after multiplying, you are getting this value as 65.6 kilometer per hour. So if maximum angle of heel that can be allowed is 50 degree, then this will be maximum speed the rider can take during the given turn. Thank you for watching this video.